All right, it's week three, Monday. Let's just kind of go over um, what we're going to be going over this week. So we're going to continue with OOP. It's going to be – we're just going to keep reiterating OOP because it's – you're going to be working with object-oriented programming throughout the entire course. We're going to talk about persistent data, which is data that is saved or stored at some place. Um, even after you execute the program or run, run the program. We're gonna be interacting with uh, CSV files. So why it's important, because every application relies on persistent data. Um, that's, that's, where the, that's where the value is in pretty much all these companies is the data. Like if you think about Facebook, Netflix, you know, Google, it's all in the data. That's, that's where they extract all the value from. Um, and you have to store that data somewhere. So after you log off of Facebook or Google or LinkedIn, your data is still stored there. So when you come back and go to that web page, go to that application, your data is still there. So again, data is everywhere. You need to know how to create it, read it, update it, and delete it. Um, create, read, update, delete. That's stand, there's an acronym for that. It's called CRUD, create, read, update, delete. You'll be hearing that throughout the, the course. And you're going to be interacting with CSV files because, you know, CSV files are the most commonly types of files used. Um, I think the people is spelled wrong here. Um, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yeah, so if you're, if you're working at an organization, all the, the business side, like the, the sales side, pretty much every other side uses Excel or CSV files. So if you're a developer and your salesperson says, hey, I need, I need a report about our application, some data about our, our application, you can go and create a report by creating a CSV file and filling in whatever data you need um, in that CSV file. Uh, so what you'll be able to accomplish after this, you'll be utilize uh, OOP inheritance to extend the uses, usage of your objects. So objects inheriting certain attributes from other objects. Create, read, update, delete from CSV file. Create associations between different tables using SQL. Understand basic data structures and know how to calculate big O. So what questions do you have about what we're covering this week? All right. So whoop. <clears throat> let's talk about, we're gonna continue with OOP. And we're gonna talk about variables and the different types of variables. So has anybody heard of the term scope before? And if so, what do you think about when you, what do you think about it when you hear the term scope? Isn't it like how far back your variables are referenced? Like in what areas your variables are accessible? Yep, exactly. It's essentially where at where in your program do you have access to s specific variables or attributes or just different functions or anything? So yeah. So if you think about scope, it's like where in the grand scheme of things are things located? Um, let's just talk about some different variable types. <clears throat> Constants variables. How do we create a constant variable in Python. Nope. Anybody? So we know how to de declare, all right, let's just, before we go to constants, we'll, let's start with local variables. How do we declare a local variable and what is a local variable? Space. Local local variables only found within its scope. Yep. <clears throat> well, okay. So if I created a variable named Tom and created a method called like print name that takes in a name variable 
and I declare another variable named name and set it to Noah and return name. What, what kind of variable is name? Global. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's kind of a trick question because right now name is a global variable up here. And then within, yeah, it's actually, it's, let's run this. Uh, print, print name and pass in name. What is it going to, what's the value of name going to be when I return it here? No. Noah. Noah. <clears throat> Let's run that. Clear Python variable types. What just happened? There we go. Yep. No. So name is a global variable, and then we reassign name to Noah, and then we return the name. So name right here is a global variable. Um, what would be like first name be? What kind of variable would that be? Local variable. Say that one more time. Local. A local variable. Yep. <clears throat> so if I wanted to access like name, well, And first name. And now I want to print this. I get Tom and Noah. So first name is a local variable and name is a global variable. But if I wanted to make first name a global variable, so before I do that, I'm going to actually uh, print name down here. So if I print this out, Run that, I only get Tom. If I print this out, I get Tom and Noah. So first name is a local variable. It's only, I can only access first name within the context of the print name method. I don't have access to it outside of the print method. So it's only accessible within here. Whereas name is a global variable, I have access to the inside this entire file called variable types.py. So I can access name anywhere within the context of this pro little program, this variable types um, file. <clears throat> so let's talk about global variables. If I wanted to make, so I'm just gonna comment that out. I'm going to bring this down here. Comment that out. And to say like, uh, I'm actually going to do something different. Print age variable. So age equals age bar and return age. Let's see this. <clears throat> Print age. So if I pass in like 86 and run that, I just wanna clear this screen and I get 86. Again, if I wanna make it a global variable or I want to try something. If I want to make, so right now age is a local variable. And if I wanted to make it a global variable, so like say I want to see print age and execute this, I get an error saying like variable name line 22, name age is not defined. 
is there a way we can make age a global variable once it's a we kind of discovered this in the last uh bubble sort review can you just add global in front of it yep we can actually make a variable called a global variable within a method just by saying global age and now it instead of it airing out saying hey age is not defined in the context of this program because initially it's a just a local variable but if i make it a global variable by doing the global keyword now i have access to age outside of this print age method and as i'm printing it out down here i've never seen global used before and you're probably not going to see it again after <laughs> today. No, have you seen it anywhere? Sorry, seen the global? Yeah, thing? like outside of. Yeah, not outside of Code Platoon. Yeah. It always feels like the nuclear option. <laughs> yeah. And you're supposed to don't like global variables. You're supposed to stay away from because when your program is running, you don't necessarily know when that variable might be changed anywhere in the program. So if you have an application like the size of, you know, these huge companies and one of those, a variable is a global variable, like there's so many places that that variable can change. So everything should be rather like localized. <clears throat> so again, local, local variables, are only available within the scope of the print name method or within the scope of the method it's defined in. Global variables are accessible within the entire, entire application, essentially. Let's talk about constants. <clears throat> what is a constant variable? A variable that will not change. A variable that will not change. So in JavaScript, how do we declare a constant variable? Type const before. Type const and then like the variable name. And this const keyword tells like the program that, hey, the var name variable is a constant and it cannot change. So if you try to change it in JavaScript, it'll throw an error. But in Python, we really don't have that because we just declare variables like some var. So what is, what kind of syntax do we use to declare a constant variable? All caps. Yep. So if a variable is a constant variable, something like, uh, where am I at? something like, you know, pi 3.14 and you keep going like pi won't well, the value of pi will never change so it's best practice if you're declaring a constant variable in python to make it all capital letter letters and that is signifying to the other developers that's saying hey this is a constant variable and it should never change <clears throat> but technical from a technical perspective you can change pi but this is literally just kind of like a syntactical sugar of saying hey everyone this variable should never change does anybody have any questions so constants so be all caps All right, <clears throat> let's talk about instance variables. You should start being familiar with these. So what is an instance variable? A variable specific to an object. So a variable that is specific to an object. But what, what about class variables? Are class variables specific to an object? 
they're specific to the entire class. So all objects okay. of that class would have that variable. So a variable, so an instance variable is used for a specific instance of the object or class. So an instance variable is unique to the instance. So variables that, that are only available to that specific instance object. <clears throat> and we can define cl class student. And how do we declare an instance variable? From a syntactical perspective, what does it look like? Self dot variable name. Yep. So instance variables from a syntactical perspective have the self dot first name, first name, and last name, last name. So def my print full name self I can like uh, return f string self dot first name self dot last name so again, instance variables are unique to the specific instance of this class. And I have access to this self, to instance variables throughout the entire context of that instance. So it's not just located within an individual method. I have access to it inside this entire instance. So I can access them here and other methods anywhere. So if I wanted to print this, print student, uh, Tom pre and then do dot print full name, right, execute that, clear that. I get Tom pre. All right. So if instance variables uh, are used specific for the instance of a class, or for, yeah, the instance of an object. Um, what are class variables? They're available anywhere in a class in all instances? Yes, precisely. That's like, it's available in all instances of that class. A variable that is accessible through through all instances and you call it on any instance. So yeah, you can call it on any instance. So if we have class employee, this is kind of what we did last, uh, last time. And we had an instance and we want to keep track of that, like all the employees, we would define the class variable outside of any method. So usually up here, so like number of employees. <clears throat> employees equals zero. And now if I wanted to, anytime I initialize a new employee, and if I wanted to increment this class variable by one within the init method, how do I access the, the class variable number of employees? Tommy. Yes. If I wanted to access the class variable number of employees within the init method, 
from a how do from a syntax perspective, how do I go about accessing the number of employees class variable? Um, you should not uh, have to use self dot. I don't think. Right. So how do I access the number of employees? Um, and your init function. Yeah. Like. Yeah, from a, from a syntactical perspective, like what should I type? And again, remember this is a class variable, so it's accessible through all instances of the class. Um, you can just name it uh, in the other function. Uh, you can just start, you can go ahead and just write number of employees under in itself. And then depending on uh, which, yep, yeah, depending on what you want to do with it, yeah, plus equals one, that'll <clears throat> preserve the, uh, the old value and allow you to add one uh, as soon as you, as soon as the um, the init starts uh, starts up. Okay. Let's see if this works. Let's see. All right. <clears throat> so if I create, oh, two new variables or instances of an employee called Tom Pre, Joan Greenwood. And if I wanted to access, so let's just clear this, run that. Uh oh, what does it say? Oh, I don't want to pay. What's going on? <clears throat> so right here it says unbound local variable number of employees referenced before assignment. So Maybe try and put a uh, self dot in front of it then. Well, that would make it an instance variable. I want to create a class variable. So this is how it, this is how we well, clear. To, to access it inside the function. Yeah, so what, does anybody, does anybody, you can just put uh, the class name employee in front of it. Okay. So put the class name employee in front and of it. Dot. Uh, so this is, this is how I access all the class variables. So I can do employee dot number of employees. So let's run this again. There we go. But now if I wanted to print the number of employees, I can access the class variable by doing employee number of employees. And I'll run that. Now I've got two employees. Comment that out. Run that again. I've got two employees. <clears throat> so what questions do you have about this? Quick review of the diff different variables. I have a quick question. Yep. Um, with the employees, was it employees dot uh, number of employees? Is it possible to also do the CLS before it, or does it, or does that not work? Like right like, here, or right. up here? Let's 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 try it out. I'm gonna try that before. Yeah. So CLS is not defined. 